with another winter themed video and today I wanted to do a festive, wintry, cozy Q&A. So I got on Instagram and I asked you guys to ask me any questions that have to do with like winter time and being cozy, and history or traditions. I got over 150 questions like so quickly. So if I don't get to your question, I'm sorry, but these are such good questions. So the first question is, favorite movie set during winter that is not a Christmas film? I'm gonna have to go with three because it's so hard for me to choose just one. First, I'm gonna have to say The Holiday, and I know that it involves Christmas, but I'd say it's not purely a Christmas film because Christmas doesn't take place throughout the entire film, only at the very end, and then it even goes all the way until New Year as well. It's about these two women that are kind of fed up with their lives. One lives in LA and one lives in England. One is struggling with relationship issues and the other one is, well, I guess they're both. They're they're both struggling with the relationship issues and just kind of tired of where they're at in life. So they decide to get online and they see that switching houses is an option. They find this website and they're like, fine, you know what? Let's do it. They're spontaneous. I love that. I would so be like, yes, okay, I'm doing it and not even give it a second thought. They switch houses, essentially kind of switching lives at the same time. It has such an amazing cast. It has like Jude Law, Kate Winslet, Cameron Diaz, Jack Black. It's the perfect mix of funny, romantic, very aesthetically pleasing. Most of you guys have probably seen it as well. It's, it's just, it's such a classic. Next, I'm gonna have to go with a bit of an older film. It was filmed in, I think, 1955, and it's called All That Heaven Allows. It's about an older woman who has this gardener who is quite a bit younger than her and a relationship sparks between them. Honestly, it's one of the most aesthetically pleasing movies I've ever seen. The colors and the cinematography is amazing, especially for the 50s. It does also have Christmas in it for like two seconds, but most of the film does not focus on it being Christmas rather than it being a beautiful winter time with a budding romance. And then lastly, Heidi. There are so many versions and adaptations of this film. I've seen, I think like most of them, but I recently watched this one and most of it is set during winter. And it's so, so wintry and atmospheric. It was like the perfect mixture. If you want like cottage core and a Green Gables, you know, like kind of out, away living off grid type vibes for winter. This one is so good. Plus Heidi is such a lovable character. I adore her. Okay, sorry, that was a long answer to one question. Next question is ultimate favorite Christmas films. This is really easy because it's also my favorite film of all time, which is It's a Wonderful Life. It's about a man who kind of is given a second chance. He has some bad things happen to him leading up to Christmas and with all of it piled up on top of him, he kind of starts to wonder if life is even still worth living. During his darkest moments, he notices this man who is about to jump off of a bridge and he goes to save him. But turns out this man is actually an angel that was sent down to help our main character realize how beautiful and wonderful his life is. It's it's ranked among some of the best films of all time and for good reason, so it's definitely, definitely my favorite Christmas film. Okay, next question is best ways to experience a Victorian Christmas. I love this question. You might not know it, but when it comes to Christmas time, we actually have more in common with the Victorians than you might think. The popularity of Christmas and the activities that we think of very quintessential to like Christmas time are actually holdovers from the Victorian era. So some of the most important things that the Victorians did during Christmas was of course to put up a Christmas tree and it's got to be a fresh Christmas tree. And then you've actually got to hang up some mistletoe, but they called theirs kissing balls and it was like a ball structure made of evergreen and mistletoe. And then you must send holiday cards, handwritten, beautiful, intricately decorated holiday cards. And then you've also got to pop a Christmas cracker, which we don't do so much now in the US, but I know it's still a big thing in Europe, I think especially in the UK. And it actually comes from this British candy maker named Tom Smith. He got the idea for a Christmas cracker when he was on a trip to France one year. There he discovered bonbons and wrapping paper and sweet almonds and he decided to make his own sweet version that snapped when it was pulled apart. So if you want to be more like a Victorian, definitely try to either make one of your own or I'm sure you could buy some online, but I think it would definitely be more in line with the Victorian mindset if you made it yourself. Also, you can't celebrate Christmas like a Victorian without reading A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens or any of other Charles Dickens short wintry and Christmassy stories. The popularity of the book actually encouraged Victorians to focus more on family, charity, and good cheer during 
during Christmas time than they had previously thought about those things during Christmas. So good job, Mr. Dickens. And then lastly, you need to go caroling. Now, caroling wasn't a 19th century invention, but the Victorians did bring back the practice of going to house to house, all dressed up nice and singing these carols back in a big way because they weren't previously doing it that much before the Victorian era, at least here in the US. And then I would also say that when it comes to decorations, try to stick to more traditional handmade or things from nature instead of a lot of stuff that you might get at Hobby Lobby. Try to focus more on evergreen, pine trees, ribbons, and tinsel, paper ornaments, and things like that. Okay, sorry, that was also a really long answer. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, this one's easy. Blanket or fuzzy socks? That is so easy. Definitely a blanket because fuzzy socks only cover your feet, but a blanket covers all of you. So it's like a sock for your whole body, essentially. <laughs> Next question is, favorite book set in wintertime? Oh, that's hard. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna talk about two of them. One is Jane Eyre, and the other one is The Blue Castle. So you all probably know about Jane Eyre. And then The Blue Castle by Ella Montgomery, author of Anne of Green Gables. This entire book doesn't take place during winter, but the winter part of the book is immaculate. It has some of the best nature writing and winter atmospheric writing that I've ever read. It's about a girl who has pretty much been living her whole life based on her mother's terms. She gets a note in the mail one day telling her something very upsetting, but also something that makes her decide to take her life back for herself. And it's just a really sweet story. Okay, next question. If you could choose to experience Christmas set anywhere in the world, where would it be? Definitely Laughlin, Lap. I don't know how to say it. Lapland, Finland. I'll include some pictures. It is literally a winter Christmas paradise. There are reindeer. You can see the Northern Lights. You can stay in ice hotels and igloos and glass igloos. You can, you can do everything. And I've wanted to go there for years, so that is my absolute dream. Next question is, what is your favorite Christmas tea? I just recently discovered this new tea. It's a sugar cookie flavored tea. I think it might be the Celestial brand. I'll put a picture, but it's so good. It is really sweet. Usually I like to add a lot of honey or sugar cubes to mine, but this one doesn't need too much. It's just so cozy and sweet. And I love treats and cookies during this time of year. So I've really been enjoying this tea. Next question, what's your favorite German Christmas tradition? So I am one fourth German, so why not just give you guys a list instead of just saying my favorite because I can't choose. Obviously Christmas markets are a huge tradition that I absolutely love. I've been to so many in Germany. I love the Munich one. There's also a really cute smallish one that I went to in Fusen. They're the most festive Christmas like get together that I've ever been to anywhere in the world. Also the mulled wine is something that we don't really drink here in the US. I don't actually drink it because I don't drink alcohol. I drink the Kinder Punch, which is basically the mulled wine without alcohol that the kids drink. That's what I drink. So good. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I also love that Germans celebrate Christmas for three days. The day after Christmas is basically second Christmas. Also, another German tradition that my family honored growing up was the fact that Christmas Eve is very much like a holy night. Uh, it's not very loud. Lights are turned off. It's mostly candles. Okay, next question. What's your favorite winter drink? So along with the mulled wine, the Kinder Punch, I would have to say old fashioned hot chocolate. Not the kind you get at Starbucks or the supermarket or the gas station anywhere. No, old fashioned kind that you make with milk and actual melted chocolate. It is a different thing, so much richer and has an actual chocolatey taste to it. It just feels so indulgent and just so fancy when I drink it. So I would have to say old fashioned hot chocolate. Okay, what are your favorite types of books to read during this time of year? It kind of changes every year based on what I'm feeling, what type of mood I'm in. This year I've been very much into Victorian vintage Christmas vibes. So I've really been enjoying classics, but I also really like heartwarming Hallmark movie type books. So I've been reading a lot 
lot of Heidi Swain books, which are better than Hallmark movies in my opinion. And I also love, they're all set in the UK. I love the manor houses, the estates, or the little quaint towns that she always writes about. In addition to that, I also read a lot of like winter cottage quarry books, basically meaning like Ella Montgomery, Anne of Green Gable type books. Um, I sometimes gravitate toward mysteries though, that's true. So I have been reading all of Agatha Christie's books that are set during winter. I also like retellings of The Nutcracker. I've been reading a few of those this year and also like vintage fairy tale vibes. I guess I'm just kind of all over the place. Favorite cookies to bake. My grandma makes these cookies. They're called El Sookies and I'll put a picture if I can find one on the internet. It's like this deep fried dough that you put powdered sugar over. I honestly don't know where they come from. I really should ask her. I know I have a lot of like Lithuanian and Polish heritage on her side. So maybe that's where they come from. I grew up with them. I eat them every year. They're amazing. Okay, next is what is your favorite Christmas decoration? I'm a big fan of traditional pine. I love to go out into the mountains and to find some trees that have more than they need and to take some, bring it home, and then use some twine or some wire to bind it together to make a garland. There's just something special about bringing a part of nature, a part of winter nature into your house and being able to smell it and see it every day. Oh, I love this next question. Which winter activity from the past do you wish you could do? Okay, so I just recently watched this Lucy Worsley documentary all about the Tudor Christmas, like the Tudor time period and how they celebrated Christmas. So if I could choose any activity, I would choose to celebrate the 12 days of Christmas. We have the song, the, you know, first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me, but I never really knew where the 12 days of Christmas came from until I watched this documentary. And I learned that back in the Tudor time period, they celebrated before Christmas, you know, Christmas and then after Christmas. And each day had a different type of theme. There were more calm, spiritual days, and then there were partying and festive eating days. So I would love to celebrate 12 days of Christmas and not just one day or I guess two with Christmas Eve. This next question says, what age did you stop believing in Santa? To be honest, I never believed in Santa. Growing up, my mom told me that Santa was like Mickey Mouse. I'm Christian and my mom always taught me about Jesus and she told me later that she didn't want me to think that Jesus was like the Easter Bunny or like Santa Claus. She wanted me to always know that Jesus was real. And so she compared Santa to Mickey Mouse because I loved Mickey Mouse and I loved Disney and I had been to Disneyland ever since I can remember. And Mickey was always, you know, like real, but not real. And that's how I always thought of Santa Claus. Okay, if you could spend a Christmas with any literary family, who would you choose? I think definitely the March family from Little Women because Marmy is so, like she embodies Christmas. Spend it with her and with all of the sisters and it would just be the most magical Christmas that's not extremely full of fancy things because they didn't have a ton of money. But that's not what Christmas is about. I, I think they embody what Christmas is and they know how to have fun. And I get to, you know, possibly hang out with Lori, which isn't a bad thing either. Okay, this next question is one that I am going to struggle to answer, but I will try my best. How can I enjoy a winter without snow? I went to university in Hawaii, so I had multiple winters that I needed to celebrate when it was 75, 80 degrees outside. Try to romanticize not having snow. I find that this works for me. Find a book or a movie where snow isn't involved in Christmas and read it or watch it. And hopefully you enjoy it. So try to romanticize that type of life. If you're always seeing snowy movies and snowy books, then of course you're going to want that. But if you start to expose yourself to media and books that doesn't have snow. I know it's more rare to find that, but it definitely does exist. So try to expose yourself to that and make that seem more the norm than the snowy white Christmas. And I think it'll be a lot easier to celebrate Christmas without any snow. And then another tip would be just to make the inside of your house or your apartment feel as cozy as possible. If that means cranking up your AC a bit, then go for that. You know, you can paint snowflakes on your windows. Just try to make the place that you're spending the most time feel wintry. Okay, next question. What's the best city to visit during Christmas? Include Europe and the US. I'm gonna have to say for Europe, 
Munich in Germany or Fussen. You guys have all probably seen this big massive castle in Germany and it's in Fussen. And then in terms of the US, we, we got two options here. New York City, which is a classic. You see in all the Hallmark movies, so many, Home Alone, like it's everywhere in the movies for a Christmas. Or Park City, Utah. I live in Utah and Park City is such a beautiful destination for winter. And along with that, I would have to say like Aspen, Colorado it kind of has the same setup. So many beautiful mountains and trees covered in snow, pine trees, skiing, snowboarding. Next question. What is your favorite vintage Christmas song? I'm just gonna go with my current favorites and I have two. First one is Looks Like a Cold Cold Winter by Bing Crosby. And then I also have been really loving Christmas Is A Coming by Bing Crosby. This is a Christmas song that I had never heard until this year. I have a Spotify playlist. It's full of vintage winter songs that aren't super Christmassy. I'll leave it in the description box. You guys can go check it out. Okay, and this is the last question and it is, what is your Christmas day routine? So usually it is wake up really early and go to the stockings first. After stockings, it's time to make a really big breakfast. Usually cinnamon rolls, turkey bacon, because I don't eat pork, uh, orange juice, and the eggs have to be scrambled with Gouda cheese. So good. And then after eating breakfast, everybody comes together if we're spending Christmas with my family and people will open presents. And we usually take a long time to do that. Every person will go around and open a present individually. We don't open them all at once. After opening presents, we'll usually go sledding. We'll usually spend a few hours doing that and we come back really, really cold. So after we come back, it's time to make hot chocolate, lots of hot chocolate, lots of different flavors. And after that, we usually decide whether we're going to stay home and watch a movie or go out to a cinema and to see a film. And then after we come up from the movie, we'll usually get ready for bed, maybe watch a bit of an old Christmas film on TV and drink hot chocolate while we all kind of fall asleep because we're exhausted from waking up early. And that's my Christmas day routine. And that's it. We're finished with all of the questions. There were a lot more, but I didn't want this video to be too long. I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe you got some Christmas wintry inspo for yourselves. I hope you're having a fantastic Christmas season so far and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye friends!